talked about kids being overly racialized, and I do accept that point because I think as a parent myself, I don't want my kids feeling that they're victims from an early age. I don't think it's healthy. But I think the, the points you made about what's happening in schools are relevant across a whole swathe of things. The, the fact that schools are clamping down on bullying now, which was just part of the school experience when I was a kid, or health and safety gone mad, they can't do conquer fights. That's just part of the process. Don't, please don't blame racism or anti-racism for that. That's just part of the general culture that we're living in at the moment. Um, and Tony's point about, you know, saying, oh, about privilege and we're here being privileged and we're still moaning about being victims of racism. The, the only reason we are here, Afwa and I, is because we've got through and overcome those barriers. And that, if, if I was still a kid in Brixton or Peckham and hadn't gone to university, I wouldn't be here at this gathering for you to even hear me. I wouldn't have got to The Guardian, I wouldn't have got into a newspaper. And, we, and, and so the idea that we should therefore shut up because we've done reasonably well is, is, is ludicrous, it's ludicrous, and basically you're saying you want to shut down, you want to shut down the whole debate. When we, when we talk about race and class, I mean, it's not a case that, you know, it's not in the case necessarily of blaming white people, it's not a case of saying that, that class doesn't matter, that gender doesn't matter, that disability doesn't matter. The question here is, is race a significant disadvantage? And re regardless of being Northern or Scottish or whatever, the fact remains, race is a significant disadvantage. And we can have a separate debate if we want to discuss all the others, and I'd probably say that they were all a significant disadvantage too. But that's, let's not go down that line of just thinking, of getting sidetracked, that because gender matters or class matters, therefore race doesn't. And on this question, I think a very interesting point made at the end about resilience. If you're, if you're a kid in Peckham or Hackney, you generate your resilience by being tough, you don't want to show off, you, you, you have a certain, set, set, you, you adopt a certain culture, you don't want to, you, you don't want to promote, edu be uh, to, into education because that will mark you down among your peer group. When you go to Oxbridge, it's a different set of, of uh, resiliences that you need. It's the same thing. Kids are showing resilience, they're showing aptitude, they're showing intelligence, they're demonstrating their survival instincts in different ways. Let's not say that one is necessarily better than the other. And, and the, the, but the, 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 the thing I'd say about, and it, 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 is, it is disappointing absolutely when kids say that they, that they want to give up on school and they're not interested in education. And yes, you can say, well, then that's not the system's fault, that's the kids' own fault. But the, the fact is that we, but, that we live in a society which, it, which is racist. We live in a society where racial disadvantage is ever present and the, the poorer you are, the more ever present it is. And, and so we can say, yes, it's not racism directly that's impacting on them, but the entire framework that they live their lives in is set by racism. And that is why race is a significant disadvantage. Thank you. OK, that's it. Um, I'm really sorry that the people who still had their hands up couldn't have their say, but you will get the chance to have your say because you're now going to be asked to vote. So the motion is, this House believes that race is no longer a significant disadvantage. I said at the outset that that word was going to be the key to the vote in this. So I'm going to give you, I don't know, 30 seconds to 45 seconds to have a little think. And then I want you to raise your hands. I think we've got somebody here from the Running Me Trust who's going to do the, the counting. Is that how it's going to work? Yep. Well, we don't know if they should be doing the counting. <laughs> A bit more okay, maybe I should do the counting. <laughs> okay, all those, all those in favour of the motion, please raise your hands. That's this side. That's this side. All those in favour of the two gentlemen to my right. Ten. Okay, all those against the motion? Yeah, right. oh, do I have to count them? <laughs> These are all Guardian readers, anyway. No, we also. That's democracy. Is somebody counting for me? Okay. Um, anyone want to abstain? Ah, oh. <laughs> standard procedure in voting. <laughs> Get with the programme. OK, abstentions. One, two, three. I don't want to spoil that part of it, but... 
Yeah. Okay, I, I didn't count the ones who were against the motion. How many did you have? Fifty-one. Okay. So. This House believes race is no longer a significant disadvantage. For the motion, 10. <laughs> Against the motion, 51. Yay. And I think three abstentions. Um, I really hope that as many of you as possible can stay to socialise, network, get your points across when you weren't able to. Thank you all very, very much indeed for coming. Um, I'm delighted with the turnout and I found it all really, really interesting. Hope you did too. Thank you very much. I wanted to just to let you all know what Runnymede is up to at the moment and encourage you to join us over in Potion Bar just across the road for a drink afterwards to continue the discussion. I think, actually, despite the fact it got heated at times, that's probably quite good news. It shows that people are passionate and care about this stuff. While most children who live above the fourth floor in this country are from black and Asian backgrounds, while Chinese graduates, despite having done very well at school, can expect to earn 25% less during their careers, while the Metropolitan Police wait 5,000 hours a year stopping and searching innocent black people, Runnymede will continue to draw attention to the problems of race and racism in our society and seek to influence policy, investigate what those barriers are and enable social action to tackle those. Our ambition is now to end racism within this generation, to set an end date for the work that Runnymede's been doing. 43 years is a lot of work and a lot of hours and a lot of time and effort people have put in. I'm sure that the 11,000 organisations across the country who are focused on these issues around challenging racial inequality have also put a huge amount of effort in. But I think we need to up our game, seek now to this ambition to make sure that within the next generation, children aren't facing racial prejudice in the way they do today. And I'd encourage you to engage with our work, to tell people about this event, sign up for our mailing list, follow us on Twitter, join our Facebook group. There's so many different ways now of, of staying in touch with us. Similarly, we're very keen to find out what work people are doing and how we can work in partnership. And finally, I'm going to ask people to donate to Runnymede as well, in the spirit of the big society, but also... Uh, <laughs> but also, I think it's about time we started to invest in the kind of society that we, we want to create. And I think an investment in Runnymede is a good one. Thank you to Razia, who's been an excellent chair, to our panellists for engaging so readily and fruitfully in this discussion, and to all of you for listening to Jessica for all her hard work in organising and the rest of the Runnymede team, uh, and again uh, to BT. I hope you can come and join us for a drink now. Thanks again. Thank